So before starting the discussion of Kubernetes, let us understand the journey of software deployment in general. If I talk about the overall transition of software deployments, then it has observed everything from traditional deployment till containerized deployment going on right now. Before 2000, there used to be traditional deployment of software wherein every application has its own physical hardware and a separate operating system. Since early 2000, we have witnessed software deployment on virtual machines, wherein more than one virtual machine can be created on a single hardware. And now, since 2014 and onwards, we have something which is called as container runtime. And it is possible to run a software inside a container, which is lightweight as compared to virtual machine. Let us understand about all these three phases in detail. Traditional software deployment is very much analogous to the housing system that we see around us. So imagine traditional software deployment as these independent bungalows. Here, the person living inside these bungalows have independent luxury environment for his own right however there is high maintenance involved in maintaining these bungalows there are no shared services that means if if the number of people are less the bungalow will be underutilized and if they are more it will be underutilized and if you ask a person to shift from one home to another, there will be always operational and behavioral challenges involved in moving from one bungalow to another, right? Because nobody wants to leave his or her luxury. Now, apply the same logic into the software world. So, in case of traditional software deployment before 2000, every software was hosted in separate hardware or separate machine it could be developers machine it could be on-premise data center it could be a testing server and every app is hosted on a separate server there were no optimization of resources no shared services high maintenance was involved in maintaining all this hardware along with their software stack and shifting of software from one machine to another was always a challenge that means if you want to shift a software from a developer machine to a testing server for testing purpose, you have to do some additional configuration and it was a pain. Okay. Similarly, from testing to production, when you shift the software, then the application may not run as it is supposed to be. So there were always operational challenges in shifting the application or the software or the code from one machine. To another then came the time of virtualized software deployment so imagine this time as the time when we had a technology to move the whole house from one place to another or shift the entire house from one place to another right so in this case it is still my house but okay now my house can be shifted into your land this is possible now but still, the person who is residing in the house has its own comfort zone and access to his own amenities. A moderate maintenance is still required in this case. Now, if we apply the same thing into software, we have something which is called as hypervisor, which, which was innovated by early 2000. So a hypervisor, you can consider uh, for, for this uh, learning, like a hypervisor is nothing but an advanced form of a OS kernel, okay, which makes it possible to have more than one virtual machine on a single piece of hardware, that means on a single server. So with this hypervisor, now it was possible to create multiple virtual machines on a single server, okay. So we call it COT server or commercially off-the-shelf cheap servers which were available in the market. 
so here it is like my app but okay i can run my app into your infrastructure infrastructure means a different server hardware and how it was possible a developer creates an app on his machine and writes it on a disk image now we call this disk image as the guest os image in the vm world so in this disk image when he writes the code so along with the code he writes the operating system and all other dependencies which are binaries and libraries and this disk image can be moved from one infrastructure to another that means this disk image can be moved from one hardware to another hardware and if if we install this deploy this disk image onto another hardware then we get same application running there okay but this is still a heavy image so in this diagram you can see there are three vms created on same hardware so one is having a guest os image 1 guest os image 2 and guest os image 3 okay and along with the guest os it's it has its application code and the dependent binaries and libraries all these three things gets written in the in the vm image and that vm image you can shift from one infrastructure to another so we have solved one part of the problem that means we can shift the software from one infrastructure to another but still the software is hosted with its own comfort zone its own operating system and dependencies on every infrastructure and because of this involvement of the guest os image uh, with every application the vm images are still heavy moving forward from virtual machines now came the time of containerized software deployment so you can imagine containerized software deployment just like a luxury hotel where a hotel management system is already in place the guest has to check in with his her luggage that's it and rest all will be managed by the hotel so you still have separation available that means separate rooms are available for everyone but all the other services are shared the restaurant is a shared place the swimming pool is a shared place the lobbies are shared the uh, all the other entertainment services are shared okay but everything is available for you whatever you need in the software world also we have something which is called as container engine now okay so the general term is container engine and the company which first introduced this container engine to the world was docker so in general we call it docker engine also however now there are more than one container engines present in the market apart from docker so, but in general wherever you uh, you hear the term docker so docker here means docker engine okay so now we have this container engine engine running on top of our operating system or the hypervisor of the cots hardware okay so a container engine you can imagine corresponding to the hotel management system so this is already in place okay and this will take care of the rest of the all the shared services for the applications so now when a developer creates an application he writes its code along with the dependencies only that means only some binaries and libraries which are required for this application he or she does not writes the whole operating system into the image the docker engine or the container engine will act as a shared operating system for all the images that are running on top of the infrastructure okay so a container runtime is already in place it will take care of everything apart from the application code and each app is working as a separate container now so this these two green boxes are one container these two orange boxes are another container and this is your third container every container now is lightweight it does not carry the overhead of the guest operating system image as it was used in case of vms so now the operating system part 
is being managed by the container engine okay so we now have less dependency on moving one software from one infrastructure to another okay the only thing that you have to ensure that you have a container engine in place and you can move these lightweight containers from one infrastructure to another now if you see this overall transition of software deployments it will be easy to understand so imagine a web application a minimum web application requ required at least three servers in case of a traditional deployment one web server a database server and an application server used to process the application logic so these used to be three different physical machines three different hardware running their own functionalities or in case of telcos the legacy system or any legacy telco node just like rnc or bsc or mme or any volti or epc node looks like this right your sgsns or ggsns they have two kinds of cards mainly the line cards and the oem cards and each card is a separate physical machine so each card has its own hardware and own operating system and their application logic running on top of it just like in case of web applications you have uh, the web server web server has its own hardware and own operating system and then the web server's application okay so there used to be physical physical uh, separate separate physical machines in case of traditional deployment when vm based deployment has come then we had these cot server okay uh, commercially of the shelf servers available uh, from market we use them as general purpose hardware on this hardware we have created virtual machines as many as are required so for example if this telco node require let's say 10 virtual machines so we create 10 virtual machines here and we connect those virtual machines internally from the networks okay so that's that's how we convert this telco node into a vnf this is called a vnf a group of virtual machine represent an application here similarly this group of virtual machine can represent this web application here okay so either enterprise or telco when they got converted into vms they got converted into group of vms and together they served as a application all these vms were managed by openstack and we call it openstack based cloud or openstack based data center so these are vms managed by openstack openstack used to be the manager for vms when we moved on to containers now in place of vms now we have containers right so we still have the same cots hardware the same cloud rack available wherein in place of vms now we will create our containers the application will be created in form of individual containers and a group of containers will be will be bounded together with network with namespaces and with some other concepts which we will discuss later in detail to manage these containers you need kubernetes so just like to manage the vms you needed openstack now to manage the containers you need kubernetes so kubernetes is a container manager and here now we can manage the whole cloud rack uh, with kubernetes and the workload running in the form of containers given the basics i will see you in the next module